Thank you for joining us here at I-80 Sports. Today, we're talking about our projections for the 2021 Detroit Lions. You ready to go, Steve? I mean, our last video was arguably the worst team in the NFL, and we're about to talk about the second worst team in the NFL. So like, now, I love pieces of the Lions. Don't get me, me wrong. Too. I think Lions might have an even worse year um, this season, but I like what they're doing. I like the direction, quote unquote, that they're headed. Um, if they are headed in the direction we think, I like some players on the Detroit Lions. Let me just say that. And let's start with the quarterback position, Jared Goff. Goff is, we know him, he's a consummate pro. He's new to the system, that scares me a little bit, but I still have him, just under 4,000 yards, 25 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. I think it's a nice conservative space, maybe a little high on yardage, low on touchdowns. The touchdown to interception ratio is gonna be about what he had all career. Steve, where's he going in drafts now, Jared Goff? He is quarterback 28 with an ADP of 1407. He's not, he's not um, been any drafted any higher than the 13th round. Yeah, he's my quarterback 23. I, I think he's a value. He's not someone you're going to be excited to get on your roster, but you have him outside of the top 24 in two quarterback leagues. I have him inside the top 24 in quarterback leagues, in two quarterback leagues. I think Jared Goff is going to have an all right year. I think he is a professional quarterback in the NFL, and that's the nicest thing I could say about him. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I mean, I'm a sell on him. And actually, I just looked at the updated, um, the updated fantasy football calculator. Cam Newton has supplanted, uh, you know, Jared Goff as the number 28 quarterback. They've only got 28 quarterbacks listed. Let's move on to DeAndre Swift, the running back that we've heard so much about during this offseason. Swift has some opportunity in, however, there are some very strong points and some very bad points. He had a very good rookie year when he finally took the starting job. However, only three games with over 15 carries. That could change. Adrian Peterson is gone. Carry on Johnson is gone. However, Swift is going to need a lot more touches to be in that top echelon of running back that a lot of fantasy analysts are already handing him. He's got to earn it for me. Yeah, um, Swift is currently running back 15 with an ADP as high as the third round. He, uh, I'm sorry, his, his average, the, yeah, it, yeah um, as, he's been as high as the first round, sorry, pick 110, and he has been as low as um, 401. And uh, as much as I love Swift, I, I'm, I'm going to have to pass on his draft price in the third round. Fourth round, I'll be a buy. But part of me, but you know, there's also that part of me that wants to take him because I think this offense is going to run through him. But then again, the other part that, you know, the one of the reasons why he was so late getting onto the field was he was an injury risk. And he you wasn't know, getting the touches. That that's what it is for me. You mm -hmm. can't run your offense through a player who only carries the ball 15 times in a game. Now add to that Anthony Lynn. We know Anthony Lynn is fickle about his running backs can't stop talking about how good Jamal Williams is. And, and I think we need to reevaluate where I have Jamal Williams for this season too. DeAndre Swift, if he's going in the first round and he's going as a top, uh, like almost as a running back one, in that running back 10 to 15 range, he is the one who carries the absolute most risk because he hasn't proved anything in his life. He is a fantasy darling. People love him. Every podcast talks about him. But for me, you got to prove yourself. Um, I think that... Currently, I have him um, at running back 10 going at 15. That's a huge value. But that um, ADP keeps going up, and my ranking of him keeps going down. It, it, as the touches go like that, we're going to, to, to flop sometime very soon mm -hmm. where DeAndre Swift will no longer be a value, and I'll be telling you he was overdrafted. Yeah. Let's move on to Jamal Williams. Um, and this is really an interesting one. I could see him being something if... Uh, DeAndre Swift does fail. Again, we've been hearing how great he is that he's he's actually Anthony Lynn said that he was the prototypical number one back. And, um, you know, DeAndre Swift would be helping out on third downs and, you know, running around the outside and doing that kind of thing. But Jamal Williams might even be getting the first touch. I have no idea where to rank him. I have mm. about 120 total touches, about 600 yards. Doesn't seem appealing to me, but this guy could have a ton of value later on. 
Yeah, um, he is he is running back 46, so that could be somewhat of a value um there. It you know, his his ADP is not terrible as well. The it, it's it's averaged in the tenth round. Now his high is seven ten. That would be too much for me, but um his low has been the eleventh round. Now this if you're going with the zero RB approach, which we do not sponsor here at IED Sports. Please do not drink. No, we do not. We cannot do this again. But absolutely, I do like Jamal Williams in certain points. Um, but overall, like I said, he's if he, if he takes over that role, maybe the, I don't like that they brought him in. DeAndre Swift, if he was that good, we wouldn't need Jamal Williams. Mm-hmm. And Anthony Lynn, you know, he's the running back guy. And it, just, it, it scares me a little bit. But I do think... If you take Swift, you must take Jamal Williams later on. And um, Jamal Williams does have, I think, uh, some good late round value in and of his own. Yeah, and and this uh, um, comes especially with a lot of uncertainty at wide receiver in Detroit. You know, I I think I think I like Williams' value here. You know, like Swift, he has good pass catching ability. We see we saw that at Green Bay, so I can see I can actually see a situation where DeAndre Swift and Jamal Williams could actually get consistent um, work and actually not cut into each other's value. You know, it could it could literally be a Cleveland situation where you have where you have Hunt. And I don't Chubb. have the stomach for that. Well, I, I, I'm just saying that, <laughs> no, that, that this that. this I mean, when we talk about the right wide receivers, you'll see why I say that, you know, and and if that's the case, then, you know, you could definitely use Williams as a flex player. When we talk about the wide receivers here, there are a couple of guys and there's no number one. There's no number two. You just got a bunch. Yeah, Amon Ross, St. Brown, you got Quinton Cephas, Tyrell Williams, Burchard, Perryman, Khalif Raymond, you got Victor Bolden, you got all kinds of guys. Um, Steve, if you just had to pick one guy out of that group, who's who's someone that you're looking at? Um, honestly, the, the, personally for me, it would be Quinton Cephas because he is the only returning veteran, the only returning veteran to this core. But absolutely, if I'm going to go one, it's going to be Tyrell Williams just because he's probably the best wide receiver out of the bunch. I love his play style. I've owned him. He's helped me in fantasy in the past. Maybe it's just uh, some nostalgia. If I have a gun to my head and I need to roll the dice, it's going to be Tyrell Williams. I'm really not interested in much that's going on here. Yeah, the only wide receiver that is actually, you know, listed is uh, is Amon Ra St. Brown. Um, he's ranked at wide receiver 76, which I believe is at the very end of the wide nice receiver time. ADP and, you know, it, and his value, let's see, I'm um, just looking real quick. Wait, don't oh, wait. I, mm, they only have 67 and I, well, just let me tell you something about Amron Ross St. Brown. Um, he is in it. Five foot 11, 197 pounds went in the fourth round. You know, when the last time a fourth round rookie running back, uh, wide receiver broke out. Uh, never. It just doesn't happen. He, he's not the pedigree. He's not the value. And I don't think anyone on this Detroit Lions team is going to be the guy to step up. Certainly not mm. Brown. I, I, I Like I said, the only person that I would actually take, uh, you know, and it's because I have him on my Dynasty Rock roster, is Quintez Cephas. He can high point balls. He He's kind of, he's actually a little, you know, it, when you look at Cephas and you looked at how he plays, he's actually kind of a little bit like Kenny Galladay. Absolutely. Now let's talk about the real number one wide receiver threat here. And that yeah, is at the tight end go. position, <laughs> TJ Hawkinson, 101 targets last season. I project that to go up to about 135. I've met 950 yards and seven receiving touchdowns. That stat is increasing, but it's following his trend over two years. And I don't think that that stat is stat line is very outlandish. Yeah, um, actually, he uh, he was tight end five, but he uh, uh, fantasy football calculator has him at six. Kyle Pitts, who we talked about at the very beginning, he has he has risen to where uh, he has risen to number five. Um, but TJ Hawkinson is going in the sixth round. That's his ADP as high as the fourth, as low as the seventh. And I'll say this much. You, he's going to, you know, I'm with you. He's going to be hyper targeted and it, it, this season just out of necessity, you know, it, there, there, there was a post that I saw um, right before, right before we started recording and it was asking if TJ Hawkinson will be a top three um, tight end this year. Yeah. Yeah, he will. 
he would yep, i have he that will. too i have him as tight end three i actually have kelsey and waller in the top tier then i have kittle and hawkinson in the second tier with hawkinson as number three mark andrews in his own tier and kyle pitts in his own tier so that kind of makes me think of the gaps that i see in what the tight ends are going to be doing this year i have tj hawkinson as my tight end three over george kittle and i have no shame i mean He's going to be targeted on every other play. I mean, he, I hmm. put him at 100, what I put him at, 135. That is not outlandish in the least. He could have 150. He yeah. could be the highest I, targeted I'm, tight end in the NFL I'm, this season. I'm wondering, um, Kyle Pitts, where do you have him? Because Kyle Pitts was the one who who jumped him. You know, when we first did I have did Kyle this, Pitts still at six. I have in order know, again, six. Kelsey Waller, Hawk, Kittle, Andrews, Pitts. Oh, Okay. All right, because so it's not uh, that it's it's that I have him above Kittle. It's that I have yeah. him above uh, Andrews. That that's really the the surprise okay. there. But this Lions team has some value if you can find it. I don't think they're going to be as bad. Um, running back, running watch. backs, and be, tight end. That's where you want to target for this yeah, team. Yeah. Running backs and tight end. That's it. That's you know, it, it, this if team were, might lose sixteen games this season, but they're also put up a couple games that are really fun to watch. And here's you know what I'm saying? Like, like they're not going to stink. They're going to be I bad. Need, they're going to lose a lot of games, but they're not going to stink. Um, I need to see the Lions' schedule real quick. I need to see if they're playing the Texans because you know it. It, it wouldn't it be crazy if there were two teams um, with that went 0 and 16 and they had to coin flip for the number one pick? Oh my goodness! And they they're, do not play each other. They do not. The, Perfect. The I mean, they, they would have to both be 0 and 17 this season because there are 17. 0 and 17. Games, yeah. We'll oh, see. We'll man. see what it brings. Um. Anyway, this has been our 2021 Detroit Lions projections. We're just doing some early season spitballing, get some stats out into the world. Steve, thank you for joining us. Uh, Evan at home. You can find us at idsports.com, youtube.com backslash i80sports. Have a great week, guys.